All right. All right, uh, we're, we're sort of right before Chag HaShavuos. And Chag HaShavuos is preceded by the Sphere of And the Sphere of is the counting of 49 days or seven weeks. Sheva Shavuos Tisporlach. Sheva Shabbos Tmimos Tiyena. Counting of seven weeks. And all kinds of explanations are given for the significance of seven weeks. There are Medrashim uh, that, that offer explanations, Rishonim offer explanations, Achronim offer explanations. And it seems to me, and I'm sure that there are those that suggest something along those lines, that the seven weeks of Spherus Omer, in a sense, could be said to correspond with the Shiva Yemei Bracious. However, whereas the seven days of creation was all part of one week, when it comes to Spherus Omer, each week corresponds with one day of creation. And the question is, why should it be that way? Why should it be that way? And I think, now, why it's important to have seven, a correspondence with creation prior to the, the, the commemoration of Matan Torah, the commemoration of the giving of the Torah, which is the holiday of Shavuos, is because Chazal tell us, our sages tell us, that, that the, if one wants to establish a relationship with God, to sense the presence of God. And in a sense, to come to have a Baruch Hu, love of God, that can be accomplished in one of two ways. Istakel by looking in the Torah and then looking at the world. When one looks at the world, he comes to see God's presence so long as he's motivated with the proper motivation. So he comes to recognize God when you look at nature. And also when one looks in the Torah and one learns in the, with the Torah. So he senses the presence of God in his learning. And he is able to establish a relationship with God. And the giving of the Torah. The purpose of the giving of the Torah was in a sense for the Jew to establish a relationship with God. So prior to that, we have seven weeks that correspond with the seven days of creation, that correspond with nature. Because all of that also is, is a way of coming to recognizing the presence of God. But why is it that in that we need seven weeks to commemorate the seven days of creation. And I think that the reason we have seven weeks to commemorate the, the seven days of creation is because there is a difference between our perception of creation, 
as creation is taking place, and our perception of nature, when we look back at creation, through the window of nature as it's taking place today. Now, I have mentioned many times in the past about the machlokis between the Rambam and the Mekubalim. Most of the Rishonim, and certainly the Sifrei Machshava of the Achronim, that have their foundation in Kabbalah, disagree with the Rambam. But the opinion of the Mekubalim and the Sifrei Machshava, like the Nefesh Achayim, the Balatanya, is that, in a sense, every moment, the world is cre recreated, yesh Ayim, from nothing. In a sense, every moment, of nature, there is undergoing a recreation. But every moment, that recreation is not the cre recreation of one day, but it's the joint recreation of all seven days of creation. And I think symbolic of that, the Torah said that when you start counting from the time of the, of the cutting of the wheat, The cutting of the barley, cutting of the wheat, the cutting of the crop. The start, in a sense, of the harvesting season. When man recognizes his benefiting from creation, from nature. So he has to understand according to the shitos, to the opinions of the Mekubalim, that recreation, but the recreation of all seven days of creation are constantly taking place. And to emphasize this point, each day is represent, the, the, there are, each week corresponds with one day. Because, in a sense, when we re experience creation, when recreation is taking place, it's not the recreation of one day, but it's the recreation of seven days that takes place on each day. Consequently, each day, to emphasize this point is counted each each week is counted as one day and why is there a necessity on focusing on this practice and focusing on the fact that each day recreation takes place but the recreation of the seven days Shabbos represents the installing of spirituality into the physical world. It's because when, some, when something is made for somebody, so initially a person recognizes who made that thing. When you hire a worker to build for you a house, 
to build for you a bookcase. So while it's being done, there is an association between the one who is the maker, the creator of that object and the thing that he's creating, the thing that he is making. But as time passes by and the person is removed from that object, there is no longer an association between the worker, the man who made the object, and the object itself. But in order to emphasize HaKadosh Baruch Hu's permanence with the world, it was necessary to focus on this idea of HaKadosh Baruch Hu constantly recreating the world. Creation is not something just of the past. Because if we see creation as something of being just of the past, then if it's only of the past, so in a sense, in the minds of man, Chas V'Shalom, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is something of the past also. And there is a tendency to forget the past. So it was necessary in the divine plan to see HaKadosh Baruch Hu as the creator. So man, a constant creator. So man should not disassociate HaKadosh Baruch Hu from the world. And but the Rambam, the Rambam's opinion is that Hakadosh Baruch Hu created the work, the world initially. Not only he created the world initially, but he created even the miracles that are going to be performed in the future. According to the Rambam, he bases it on the Medrash Rabbah, the Rambam in his parish in Pirkeyavos, that mentions the Medrash Rabbah On the Pasuk can be gracious. Yikabu hamayim el makom echad b'seiroa hayapasha. Let all the waters of the earth come to one place and let the dry land be seen. And the Medrash asks, if all the waters come together to one place, obviously the remaining places will be land. Why did the Torah, why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu have to say, let the land be seen? And the, the Medrash says, Tanai Hisna HaKadosh Baruch Hu. God made a, a, a condition with my Sabracious to split when the Jewish people come to the Yamsuf, the splitting of the sea, sea was something that God decreed, not at the time, it seems, when the Jewish people stood by the sea on their, on their journey away from Egypt. But it was a miracle that, in a sense, God programmed into nature at the time of creation. 
Now, this Rambam presents a dilemma. Now, I, I have to mention this uh, perhaps is relevant to the, to the question, but I once asked my father, Satsal, as to regarding this Rambam, I, does this apply even to the miracle of Matan Torah? And my father said, no. The miracle of Matan Torah, even according to the Rambam, was something that even theoretically defied nature. The other miracles, according to the Rambam, do not in theory defy nature because they were programmed, so to say, that was not my father's words, were programmed into nature at the time of creation. But Matan Torah was something that defied even theoretical nature. And we could perhaps suggest that perhaps that's the reason to distinguish between Matan Torah and the other miracles. So beforehand, we have the seven weeks that correspond with the seven days of creation. And that's followed by Matan Torah, which defies not only nature as we know it, but even theoretical nature. HaKadosh Baruch Hu appearing, Maimed Harsina, was just beyond any form of nature. It was not associated with Matan Torah. It was perhaps associated with Matan Torah in the sense that the continuation of nature was dependent upon Matan Torah taking place. But it defied all forms of nature. However, there are other issues that arise, and I've mentioned some of these questions beforehand. If everything was programmed into nature, if all the miracles of Kriyas Yamsuf was programmed into nature, and Kriyas Yamsuf is the example, but it applies to the Seres Makos, to the Ten Makos also. It applies to all the miracles that took place throughout Jewish history. So what's the purpose of davening? Based Zara, in time of trouble. The miracles that, take, that took place and that will take place, according to the Rambam, were already programmed into. And what is HaKadosh Baruch Hu's involvement in this world? if everything was programmed in creation. But I think that what the Rambam means is that, you know, every once in a while I mention, whenever there is a miracle, every, every so often, some scientist tries to write a paper explaining the different miracles on the basis of the laws of nature. Freak things happen. Different forces come together. The weather acts in a certain way. And that causes strange things to happen. There are hurricanes, tidal waves, tsunamis, 
Media rights. But many things have to come together. Different winds have to come together. Different temperatures have to come together. Different celestial bodies have to, have to move in a certain way. Sometimes it might require different objects or celestial bodies banging into each other. Who knows? It can all be explained on the laws of nature. But someone has to bring all these laws of nature at a particular moment together. And that's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu does. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, when he formulated the laws of nature, he formulated the laws of nature in such a way that the miracles could be performed through the laws of nature. Most of the time, we're not able to understand how it happened. But according to the Rambam, we could suggest that it did happen. And sometimes it might be that the scientists who write these papers, they might be touching to a, a very small degree, perhaps and it's the way certain miracles might have taken place. But who allowed these miracles to take place? Who brought the different forms of nature together? It was HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is constantly there. So I think that this, this is what the what what it what the Rambam might mean. So the idea again, the seven day the seven the seven days, the seven weeks correspond with the seven days of creation because it's to remind us of Hakadesh Baruch Hu's presence every moment. Uh, that everything is taking place in the, the in the future. Everything that's taking place is based. Hakadosh Baruch Hu is using the laws of nature to bring about the events that are taking place in the, in in a, in our time. And It's interesting, the Rambam in, in, the, in the beginning of Yara Chazaka, the Rambam says, Yisod ha Yisodos, Ba'amud ha'chokmos. The foundation of all foundations and the pillar of all knowledge, Leida, to know. There is he who was there first or prior to everything is a better way of saying it. And he brings into that everything that there is there. And whatever is found in heaven and in, 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 in earth comes as a result of his existence. And that's the first mitzvah of the Torah, of Anochi, the first mitzvah of the Aser Siddivers, excuse me. Anochi Hashem Alekecha, Asher Otsay Sicha Meretz Mitzrayim Yibes Avodah. Now it's very interesting. The Rambam, when he talks about the mitzvah of Anochi, he talks of HaKadosh Baruch Hu being prior to everything else. And that everything in the world that we have today comes as a result of his existence. So it's, it's all. And the Torah, when the Torah mentions it, 
The Torah tells us, Anoche Hashem Bakecha, Asher Hotzei Sicha Meretz Mitzrayim Mi Beis Havadim. I am the God who took you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. The Rambam talks about creation, about nature, about everything that's taking place in the world. And the Torah talks about an historical event. But the Torah is talking to the Jewish people of, of Egypt who left Egypt. And he says, you should know that whatever took place in your exodus from Egypt, long after the time of creation, I am the one who brought it about. I brought it out from the very beginning. What's the idea? The Rambam says, lay that to know. And all the Mepharshim talk about the difference of Leida and Lahamit. In the in the uh, in the Sefer Mitzvahs, the Rambam doesn't talk about Leida to have knowledge of God's existence. He talks about belief in God's existence. Now, Reb Chaim Heller. And many point out that contradiction. Reb Chaim Heller, in, uh, in his notes on the Sefer Mitzvos, now the Sefer Mitzvos was written in Arabic and was translated into English. And Reb Chaim Heller, who knew so many languages, he points out that the Rambam used an Arabic word that means both to believe and to have knowledge. The one who translated the Sefer Mitzvahs, he only put Lahaman to believe. But actually, the word itself means to have knowledge of God's existence. So the question is, what does it mean? Later. And what does Lahamin mean? There were those who assumed that Leida means to have knowledge of God's existence. In other words, the proofs, the Rambam and Marnabuchim, he offers proofs of God's existence. And then in the way some of the commentaries explain it, there are different levels. In the mitzvah of belief in God's existence, there are there are the, there are those who understand that the mitzvah of of belief in God's existence is 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 is, is that's one level, but on a higher level. When a person reaches a certain level, he has to have he has to have yidia. They bring down the name of Reb Chaim. Reb Chaim, the way I saw it brought down, it's not exactly that point, but Reb Chaim would say that yidia begins where Amuna ends. Amuna is belief. I was told, I accept, I believe. The idea is to understand. And the way many want to say, this part of Chaim doesn't say, but the way many understand it is that on one level, I'm told by my parents, I'm told by my teachers, and I've come to accept the idea of God's existence. And perhaps even I look around at the world. The idea is to be able to prove God's existence. But that 
as my uncle points out, to be very strange. In other words, when a person comes to a certain level, he's required to know the proofs, the philosophical proofs of God's existence. My uncle said, had difficulty with that, and I think rightfully so. And my uncle suggested that the word leida, he understood it the way I would understand it. My uncle understood leida to experience God. In other words, when you look at nature, when you see the sun going up, don't see just the sun going up, but seeing how HaKadosh Baruch Hu is causing the sun to go up. Don't look at nature and don't look at the events of the world without seeing God's hand in it all. And I think This is important for Shavuos, not only because the mitzvah of Anochi Hashem Olekecha is the first mitzvah of Yaseris at Dibros, but also because Matan Torah is not just the receiving of the Torah. But it's the meeting between God and the Jewish people. And it was meant not to be a meeting, a, a, a one-time experience. But it was meant to be an, an initiation of an ongoing experience. Of sensing the presence of God. We sense the presence of God in our seeing God's presence. So, in, in, we, we are required to experience God's presence. When we, when we look at nature, we're required to, the mitzvah is to see the hand of God. When we look at history, and some of the Mepharshim say that there is a mitzvah to study history, not baits of history, but sometimes if you have the proper attitude, you look through history, you can see the hand of God. But the mitzvah of Anochi Hashem Kachap rests primarily in seeing God, in experiencing God, not just seeing God. You can see God in history. You experience God in the present. You experience God in the events that take place in your lifetime whether it's in your personal life or in the life of the Jewish people of your time, you experience God. You can experience God in the events that are taking place in the world. To the Jewish people who went out of Egypt, their primary focus at that time in terms of the events that were taking place in their life, was was Yitzias Mitzrayim. The, for the Jews of Matan Torah. So no chi Hashem al kelcha should say sicha meretz Mitzrayim based upon it. It wasn't just freaks of nature that happened by themselves that coincidentally led you to leave Egypt. Now, the events that took place in your lifetime was I 
God, Anochi, as the Mabum points out, I and no one else. And when we see events that take place in our lifetime, we saw just within the last couple days the miraculous events of freeing of four hostages. Yes, a lot of credit has to be given to the Israeli army for their Messiah Snefesh, for the risking of their lives, for those who died. But we have to realize that they were should, they were acting together with Hakadosh Baruch Hu. It was Hakadosh Baruch Hu who enabled them. They were the shlichim of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. They were the agents of God. And we have to have Hakara to the agents of Hakadosh Baruch Hu also. We see. That when it came to the first three makos, Dam Tzvardei Akinim, so Aaron had to be the messenger who brought those makos. Why? Because the river, the Nile, saved Moshe when he was a baby. So a maka, a plague that was associated with the Nile, couldn't be brought by Moshe because of Hakara Satov. Recognizing that I benefited, what the, the Nile is a is a living being, but when we don't recognize the tov, the God, the, the good that we benefited from. From the of the shliach, we don't recognize the shliach. We begin not to recognize the mashaleach also. When we don't recognize the agent, we deny the salvation that we receive, and ultimately that comes to denial of the role that Hakadosh Baruch Hu placed. There are those who have trouble acknowledging what the soldiers, those who are most nefesh, did for them, for Klau Yisrael, for the Jewish people. And because of this, they'll find of all kinds of excuses how they were not the beneficiary. But what this usually, this manifests itself, and that's the lesson from Moshe Rabbeinu. And Kinim, Moshe Rabbeinu, it was uh, the earth was used. Moshe Rabbeinu used the earth to hide the Mitzri, the Egyptian who he killed. So we, it's, if we don't recognize the shliach, we don't recognize the agent, we ultimately come, not ultimately, we come to deny the benefit that we receive from HaKadosh Baruch Hu through that shliach. So we have to recognize the miracle. We have to recognize the fact that we benefited, and most important of all, we have to recognize how Kaddish Baruch Hu did it. It's not something that just happened, but it's something that Hakadosh Baruch Hu did for us on our behalf. And so, this is the mitzvah of Anochi Hashem. 
So for the Jews of the generation of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, the Onochi Hashem manifests itself in, primarily, but of course not limited, primarily in the events of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim in, the, in Matan Torah, in the giving of the Torah. But for us, we have to see the experience HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the events that take place in our day as well. And we have benefited in the last years so much. It wasn't that long ago that the Holocaust took place, that the Jewish people were almost annihilated. And if you want to know why these people are demonstrating, screaming, against Israel. It's because they are recognized, they are frustrated. And in a certain sense, while they're not ready to admit it, their frustration is from the benefit that the Jewish people are getting from Hekos Baruch And I think on a certain level, they're recognizing it and like, unfortunately, some of Achenu Bnei Yisrael, they're trying to deny HaKadosh Baruch Hu's role in it. So the mitzvah of Anochi Hashem these events take place in our life. We have to see the hand of God that was bringing these events into fruition. And the truth of the matter is, this idea that Yediyah means experience, I think we can see from the Pasuk by Sukkis. Torah tells us why do you have to sit in Sukkah? There is knowledge that you get in history books. But the knowledge you get in history books, you could see the hand of God, but you don't experience it. But the knowledge that we obtain from our experience uh, of what takes place in our lifetime, and especially that which affects us, that is that that is we are experiencing it. Torah by Sukkah says it's not enough to hear about the Sukkah. In a certain sense, you sit in the sukkah. Of course, it's not the exact same thing. But there's a certain degree of experiential phenomena involved. We have to experience HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Shavuos is the holiday of Matan Torah. But the holiday of Matan Torah is not just a, a, a dedicated to the idea of receiving the Torah of receiving the law. It's not just, doesn't focus just on legalities, on law, but it's experiencing the presence of God. Ilu kervonu lifnei har sinai below nasan lanu es Torah. If he brought us close at Mount Sinai and didn't give us the Torah, Dayenu, what would have been the purpose of it all? But Kirvanu doesn't mean he brought us close to Mount Sinai. But at Mount Sinai, God brought us close to him. In other words, the idea, part of the idea of Matan Torah is focusing on sensing the presence of God, of more than that, of experiencing the presence of God. 
You sowed how you sow those for Chokmos, the foundation of all foundations, and the pillar of all knowledge, Leda, to experience Shuhumatsi Rishon. We he was the first one, he was the creator. And everything that is in this world, everything that's taking place now. For whom Mamsi called Nimsa, he is brings and in, brings into the world everything that is. Whatever is in heaven and earth and between them comes from his existence. That that is part of what Shabuis is dedicated to. And when it comes to Kabbalah Satora, it's not enough for the for the Jew. It's not enough for for us. It's not just the celebration of the Torah, but it's the celebration of the giving of the Torah, and the giving of the Torah. Is not something that that we're 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 just celebrating the having of a law, uh, but it's the fact that Hakadosh Baruch Hu gave us the Torah. You know, you have scholars who study the Bible, that study Talmud. That look at the commentaries. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu is not some, somebody who they experience. Chazal tell us that one of the reasons Yerushalayim was destroyed because Lo Berchu Batorat Chila. They didn't, they didn't make the bracha on the Torah first. What does that mean? What is the purpose of the Torah? In other words, you can have people who are intellectually oriented and they like the intellectual challenge of the Torah. I'm told that in South Korea, I don't know right now, but a few years ago, how there was a trend, people were studying Talmud there. The logic of the Talmud, the law of the Talmud. But we have to, part of the idea of the Torah is, of Kabbalah's Torah, it's not just what we got, but it's who gave it to us. And that's ongoing. It's not, my Kabbalah's Torah was not something of the past. It began at Har Sinai, but it's continuous. Who gives us the ability to start Torah? We, before we learn in the morning, we make a bracha that starts Baruch HaTah Hashem. Help me in my learning. Make it, make it that I should like the learning. That I should have a disposition to the learning. Teach me the Torah. Baruch Hashem, no saying HaTorah we say at the end. But no saying HaTorah. It started in the past. Torah doesn't change Chas V'Shalom. But our acquisition of Torah is ongoing. But we have to know who we're getting the Torah from. We're getting the Torah from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We have rebellion. We have teachers. We have friends who we learn with. 
and they play a big role. But they're only shlichem. Of course, we have to have a chorus at home. They are the shlichem of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But we have to remember that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is part of the giving us of Torah, not just in the past, but presently he's part of it. You have to be able to create a relationship in Korea, they might learn Talmud, but they're not learning Torah. They're reading the words. They're understanding, perhaps, the words. Perhaps even some of the logic. But it's not Torah. I remember my brother told me that many years ago, he was talking to my father's cousin, David Zatzal, David Soloveitchik. And he was talking about a certain person who had a certain relationship with our family. And this person was a teacher at one of the universities of Talmud. And apparently Reb David, I assume, I, I didn't know the person, but apparently this person at one time might have had a relationship with Reb David, whatever. And my brother asked him what he thought about this person. So first Reb David told him that he wasn't impressed with the person's knowledge, whatever it was. And then he says, and it's not Torah either. If one studies Gemara for history, it's not Torah, it's history. If one studies Torah for sociology, to understand the society, it's not Torah. It's sociology. For it to be Torah, there has to be a no Sena Torah. Even a Shenosan Lano Torah of the past is not enough. It has to be a no Sena Torah. Baruch Atah Hashem, you God. When I'm learning Torah, you are there. This is the continuation of my Menhar Sinai. mention why is it why is it that that there are no symbols in Shavuos I mentioned that here Pesach has matzah tomorrow carbon Pesach from the base of Mikdash was in existence Sukkis has the sukkah Shavuos has no symbols the answer is, when it comes symbol, we need symbols to remind us of the past. We don't need symbols to remind us of the present. Shavuos represents the present. And Shavuos is the 50th day after the second day of Pesach. In a sense, it symbolizes. It symbolizes also, as I've mentioned in the past, the idea of Yovel, which is fifty years. And we say about Yovel, "Vabadolola," will be his servant, Eved Ivri, under certain circumstances. He is the servant. We've said, "Hafti is." I don't want to go free. He remains a servant forever, but he goes free at Yovel. Notice Yovel represents a new era. 
Lola means the duration of this era. 50 represents the era. So in terms of the historical event of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, that's a celebration of the past. But Mount Torah, which is on the 50th, that's a new era. That's the era of the present, the era of Torah. That began with Mount Torah. We're celebrating the present. The fact that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the no Saint HaTorah. He's constantly giving us the Torah. And it was a, at one time in Hungary, there was a Shaila about a certain woman, whether uh, it was her husband had run away and then a man claimed was the husband. And there were all kinds of details involved. And he gave certain riots, but other people had spacious doubts. And it was a big machlokis among the Hungarian rabbonim. Whether to allow her to remarry with, the, with this person, the, the, the husband who people had doubts whether he was really the husband. Some said yes, some said no. Whether the, if he gives her a get, whether she could remarry or not, because he told over certain things that only the husband knew. But others said he might have met the husband along the way, and there was reasons to believe that he did encounter the husband. And at that time, the Shinovar was the was the son of the uh, Chaim Sanza. So Chaim. So it was agreed. He was one of those that felt that th there wasn't enough evidence at that point. So they should give over the Shaila to a Lithuanian to Lithu to a Lithuanian rub, a Lithuanian posek. And and the question was because apparently. It could be many people were were had some connections with the family. There was all kinds of questions uh, about who about whether unconsciously we might be influenced, and there was no no agreement among the Hungarian rabbanim. So it was decided they'll they'll give it over to a Lithuanian rub, the Paskin. The Shinovar said that the only one Psach that he's willing to accept from the Lithuanian Rabbanim was the Beis Halevi, Reb father. And he gave a reason. I, whether, I, I'm sure there were others that you could trust that, uh, and all that. I'm not interested so much in the story. But he said about the Lithuanian Rabbanim, he said, the, the Lithuanian Rabbanim, they have fear of the Shulchan Aruch. He said, the base Halevi has fear of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Of course, listen, I, I, I'm not chas v'shalom finding fault with anybody. These were all dolim, dolim, dolim. Great. We can't even imagine how great these people were. But I just want to mention the idea. The idea is that when we look at Torah, it's not enough just to look at the Torah but to see HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the Torah. And that was the Beis Halevi. He was constantly walking, and I'm sure the others were also that way. He was constantly, he was constantly looking in the Torah, but in the Torah, he was constantly seeing HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Before we learn, we make the bracha, Birchas Torah, Baruch Atta Hashem. When we're learning Torah, we're being mekabal the Torah. It's no Saint HaTorah, HaKadosh Baruch who's giving us the Torah in the present. The holiday of Shavuos is a holiday of the present. And the seven weeks correspond with the seven days, but correspond with us seeing nature in the present. 
And when we see nature in the present, the purpose is to see HaKadosh Baruch Hu nature. We come to recognize HaKadosh Baruch Hu by seeing HaKadosh Baruch Hu in nature, by seeing HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the world, and by seeing HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the Torah. The holiday of Shavuos is not just dedicated to receiving the Torah, but it's to recognize and seeing and continuously seeing the No Saint HaTorah as well. If anyone has questions, please put them in the chat. The statement about um, Yediya and Amuna is that where Yediya ends, Amuna begins. Where Chaim said, where, where, where Amuna ends, Yediya begins. Where okay. Amuna ends, uh, excuse me, where Yediya uh, where 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 uh, 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 where, where Yediya ends, Amuna begins. Yes, where because he, he where Rapaim said is there's a limit to to the to the Yediya that we could have of Hakadosh Baruch's existence, but Amuna we could have even beyond that point. Rav Shach brings it down in his Chedushim on the Rambam. I think. Uh, so he brings that he heard it from the Briskarov, that the Briskarov said that. I think in the way he discusses the halachas of Priyashma, that the Briskarov told him over in the name of Reb Chaim. Where, where Yediya ends, Amuna begins. Others say just the reverse. They wanted to say that there are different degrees, but it's really the same thing, just mentioned the opposite way. Before once gets you get your dia, he has to have a moon. But my father and his safer is inclined to that approach in the Rambam, that initially a person has a muna, but then after the stage of a muna, he gets your dia. But there's a limitation in the idea that's a, a muna, uh, um, uh, then he has to have a muna for beyond. His his ability at Yediyah, to have Yediyah. Okay, there's no other questions, so uh, have a good week, everyone. Have a good Yantif. Yeah. Mm -hmm.